it's completely new from the ground up. Uh, what you won't really realize is that this has actually been a five-year project for us. So those who are familiar with the Pro product, the Nova, and this had the first uh, sort of a new user interface. Okay. What's significant about it is that it's actually a whole new operating system chain. So this is from the, the base Linux kernel, completely rewritten. There are some bits that we can reuse, but fundamentally, it's completely rewritten from scratch. So it looks like just a nice new interface, but it's much more than that. You know how it is with software. You get different engineers over the years. You do code on top of code on top of code. So this is actually a really good time for us to clean the slate, um, start with a new code structure and go from there. So yeah, that's what we're doing. So obviously we want to make it more user-friendly. Um, so you will get rid of all these substructures you have right yeah. now in your existing configuration. Absolutely. So um, we want to make it more user-friendly. So uh, obviously we still rely on our dealer partners. You know, that, uh, that doesn't change. But, um, you know, the benefits of having a new user interface is it makes your job easier as an interactor. So let me show you how it works. Sure. And uh, that's cute. You even have a small wizard being displayed. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is our favorite new little wizards. Oh, yeah. And it is very much a wizard based setup. Okay. But we have basic and expert modes. So you don't lose any functionality compared to what you're already used to. You only gain functionality and user experience. Is this primarily supposed to be used by a VNC or just web configuration or app? So it's uh, mainly app controlled now. So the Trinov um, desktop apps that are free of charge from the website, that's where this is designed to work. It does also work the web browser. It doesn't support VNC any longer. Okay, that's, that's good to know. It is, it is actually, yeah, it's good. <laughs> so let's have a quick look. So we're going to start with the setup wizard. Okay, so let's have a look at the configuration. So first thing we need to do, is uh, put in the room dimensions. Okay, now this feeds the waveform algorithms. Okay. Okay, this is the first step that when buying a brand new product, yeah. you have to face and to go through. Exactly. So if I press next, let's assume the uh, dimensions are correct. Yes. We then move into the speaker deck curation. So we now ask you, how many speakers do you have? So we're going to do 9.1.4 in this example. And let's add four subwoofers so we can utilize waveform. So you can now see on this side, the run, where your speakers are. If you go into expert mode, this is now where you can add your speakers in a much uh, more intuitive way. So that's up in the top right hand down. Okay. So let's say you want to add left top middle. It looks pretty fresh. Yeah, yeah you click on here, yeah, as both your channels that you want to add your voice of God for Blu-ray, or your synthesis around, whatever. Okay. In the addition, we can also do an array. So we can array channels together. So really nice and easy. If you want to choose your different nomenclature, we can do that. So whether you uh, recognize the naming structure from Dolby, from DTS, Oro, from Trinov, or even RP22, we can do that. So let's choose RP22 and you can see the naming structure changes. Would you mind to recall what RP22 is yes, for all the viewers who are not familiar with yeah. that term? So um, RP22 is CD as recommended practice for immersive audio design. Okay, so um, it's a very good way of designing your cinemas and your uh, your rooms with a performance standard in mind. Terrific, yeah. So let's click X. So let's use the example of using all our speaker channels on Dante and subwoofers as analogs. Yes. Ah, I got it. And there you can also define one channel as uh, digital crossover and buy and take stuff like that. Big noise, PQ, all the usual. Stuff. Do you still have to play back some noise, uh, some digital stream media or stuff like that first and all being able to use the nurse generator? No, not so. Okay. No, no. So now with the UI, it, it changes over to an analog input with a clock. Okay, that's, that's good to you know. Press ping boys, it would pop. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's, that's good. <laughs> it's just these little usability things that just make life a lot easier. You don't have to remember to do that little bit of, of uh, sure. stuff. Sure, I appreciate it. Uh, so let's move on. So that's our setup wizard easily. Eats. Let's now go into the calibration wizard. So you can see the microphone is connected. Yes. It's ingested the serial number and the compensation file for the microphone automatically. We press next. These graphics will change. They'll be more residentially focused at the moment. This is just a, a placeholder. Sure. Eddie West placed the microphones. 
We then have a pre-calibration level alignment. Okay, so we've an SPL readout from the microphone and we can say for my left speaker, okay, I need to move that a 3 dB louder or my subwoofers or my surrounds. Um, and this allows us to get most sort of uh, headroom out of the DAC stage. So the calibration level was also stored. So if you go away and come back, um, if you add another measurement, it will automatically go back into that level. So you don't have to remember what level did I calibrate at for you. We've got an RTA here, okay? So we can see uh, just at a glance, is there any, it's only third octave, so it's not a huge resolution, but just at a glance, is there any major issue with that speaker when we're testing with pink voice? So let's go next. So, do you want to do a halting point? Sure, this is self-explaining, yes. Or do you want to do play forming? Awesome. So, as some of you will know, when you're doing the turn-off measurement, we need the microphone centered in the, in the room. You need it uh, turned to the right angle for the center speaker. Those who are familiar with the previous platform, you know that there's a little trick that we were doing. You had to go into a number of menus to see what the rotation of microphone is. Now, as soon as we take the measurement, you can see here where the steepest burn up, where a microphone is pointed. If you need to make an adjustment, you cancel the calibration, make an adjustment, and then you go back to where you're doing. So you can really get that perfect. But all the information you need is directly here on the page. So you mentioned your press factor in the last video. Yeah, so press factor error. Okay, if you need to reduce press factor, you can do that. Okay, let's. Yeah, so now it's right front and center while you're doing calibration. So you rearrange this stuff. Yeah. There. Exactly. <clears throat> so there we go. So let's go next. Whoa. Now, for waveforming, we need to choose our emitters and our absorbers. Okay, so just a reminder, waveforming starts at four subwoofers and we can go up to as many as required for the, uh, for the given space and performance we're trying to achieve. We choose which ones are our emitters, which ones are our absorbers. We then give you a measurement layout based on the room dimensions that you gave us earlier. Okay, so we tell you that your measurement needs to be 1.1 meter off the ground based on the ceiling height. Your measurements need to be one meter apart. This measurement over here, so the upper layer measurement will be 1.6 meters off the ground. So based on the room dimensions, we're giving you the best idea of where to place your measurement. That's very... Some of you will be familiar with this view. Okay, you'll know this from the, web, the waveforming uh, guide and the waveforming goals we give you. So we can represent it in a couple of different ways. Cool. So I can't take a measurement because I don't have any speakers. Sure. Okay, but um, we would go through, do the calibration, everything would be set. So let's assume that we've done a calibration. So I'm going to go to a, a preset that does have a calibration on it. Let's have a look at the graphs. So We've completely redesigned the way we present the graphs. Okay, you can now do uh, lots of different overlays. So if you want to overlay frequency response with phase um, or group delay with phase to monitor um, those relationships, you can do that. Um, we've changed the color palette as well because uh, for, for those that are unfortunately colorblind, um, they couldn't see your previous interface and he's a mess. So we've really worked on optimizing that again for usability. So. A couple of nice things in here, we can do a crosshair. So you can see at 8,680 Hertz, down at minus 1.3, before and after, and then you've got all your overlays. <laughs> Let's have a look at something that I think is really, really cool, which is in the target curves. So the way we've done the target curves now, um, previously you would have to go back to your graph data, have a look, then make an adjustment, go back to target curves, back and forwards, back and forwards. What you can do now is overlay your frequency response from your speaker with the target curve. So let's take an example. Um, let's take an example of a Bowles and Wilkins speaker. Okay. They have a very defined sonic signature between one kilohertz and five kilohertz, which is a, a dip. So that will show up in the before response. So let's take this example. So if we wanted to maintain that characteristic of that speaker, we just follow the before response. If we want to be respectful of the high frequency roll off of that speaker, we do it there, oh, that's very good. We apply it, and then we can see in the after response how closely got to that, um, to that toggle. So if we recompute that, I'm probably gonna break it now. That's not the way it works when you're doing, uh, you're doing demos. Uh, well, okay, so it doesn't look like that part's quite, oh, oh no, maybe. 
Are you going to implement regular tone controls? Yes. Like height and bass, bass yes. management? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, tone controls is something we've been asked for a lot. Yeah. And it's something that we really do need to implement first. So, so, I mean, that's about all I can show you today. So the software is not quite ready. And there's lots of features in there that we're, that we're going to be releasing shortly. It looks very compelling so far. Really, not, and I think it really plays into the ease of use of the product. There, yeah, so. Perfect. Can't uh, wait to get my hands on the hair. Yeah. As an installer, it's also quite interesting to, yeah, to be faster when, when doing calibrations and it being all those sub menus and it seemed like being um, blown up over the time with so many features that came into it. Yeah, it's a much more nervous. And this user interface is going to be completely cross-platform, so it's going to be um, the same in our cinema product, in our pro audio product, in our residential line. So those customers that are doing all those different markets, they have a completely unified user experience. That's what's really important. And when do you plan to release the software? So, as I mentioned in the last video, um, we're currently waiting for the um, uh, Codex. So they're going to be um, going to be their certification shortly. So we're hoping November. Let's see. And when you get the new product, this one, the Altitude CI, yep. this one will already be included be, in yeah. that, and it will be upgradable for the other processors later this year or early next year. So yeah. Okay, got it. Perfect. So we're looking forward to that. Very nice. Thank you so much for this uh, comprehensive information. Absolutely. My pleasure. Shanks last. Great to see you.